at seven o'clock precisely. As we always do, we will start with the Pledge of Allegiance. There is a flag on your screen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And before we get too deeply into the meeting, I just wanted to uh, make a couple of comments. Uh, the budget and amendments posted on tonight's agenda are not likely to be the ones we pass. The town council will be discussing a number of changes to that document. I do expect to pass a town budget that has no tax increase, no immediate loss of jobs, and does not draw down our reserve fund. I've been working with the Board of Education Chair to find an alternate pathway to this goal. Due to the incredible impact of COVID-19 virus has had right here in Farmington and loss of jobs, pay cuts, furloughs, restricted movement, and most importantly, loss of lives. The thought of adding to these burdens with a tax hike seems unreasonable. We'll now move to agenda item C, presentations and recognitions. Seeing none, agenda item D, public hearing, also none. Agenda item E, new items, none this evening. We will now go to agenda item F, public comments. We will be conducting public comment in two phases. The first phase will consist of town clerk reading all of the correspondence received since the amended agenda was released on May 11th, 2020. The second phase will allow any attendees of this meeting the opportunity to speak. To participate over Zoom, if you are logged in on only a computer, please raise your hand virtually. We will lower your hand as confirmation that your name has been added to the list of speakers. Do not lower your own hand. If you are logged on a computer and using a phone as your microphone, please do not raise your hand. Send a message through the chat feature with your name and cell number. We will compile a list of everyone who wishes to speak and call on the attendees one by one. Depending on the number of participants wanting to speak, creating this list of speakers may take some time. We appreciate your patience as we navigate through this public comment portion of the agenda. So please, you may start raising your hands now. I will now call on the town clerk, Paula Ray, who will read all comments submitted electronically or by phone. Paula. Good evening, Mr. Chair. Paula Ray, town clerk. The first comment, Elizabeth Kenyon, 154 Mountain Road, Farmington. I am writing as a longtime resident of Farmington and a teacher for most of that time. My three children have graduated from FHS and my three grandchildren are presently attending schools in Farmington. During the course of these many years, I have seen many changes. Our programs have grown and expanded in scope and excellence. And our teachers have always been partners in these developments. But there have also been challenges and again, teachers rise to the occasion and step up and do what is necessary to support our children, your children. During this pandemic, as you are all aware, we have delivered connected learning lessons, doing our best to make sure the lessons were educational, engaging, and developed with the rigor of Farmington and the caring for each student's well-being. Often teachers are on the computer eight plus hours a day, learning new technology and dealing with the frustration when it doesn't work. Students come to us with more challenges now, and again, teachers step up. We focus on social emotional learning as a top priority, helping students identify and talk about their feelings and how to regulate them with appropriate strategies. Students can't be at their best if they are not in a calm, stress relieved state of mind. Administrators have provided us with professional development to learn more about how emotions affect learning and the well being of our students. We are continually working on this in addition to teaching our subject matter, providing interventions for students who need them, and nurturing and encouraging students, often before and after school. Our day does not end at four o'clock or on the weekends. In these changing times, it is more important than ever that teachers have the resources they need to address these challenges and the needs of our students and teachers. 
Cutting any programs or teachers would impact our excellent school system for years to come, perhaps never fully recovering from that. As a homeowner, we moved here because of the excellent school system and the cooperative effort among the town's residents, the Board of Education, and the elected town officials. These are some of the reasons I respect, respectfully ask that you consider to fully fund the educational budget. I thank you for your, your public service and for the opportunity to be heard. Leanne Fenton, Three Long Ridge Court, Unionville. Dear Town Council, thank you for your work on this subject for the coming fiscal year. I recognize that in these unprecedented times, your job has become increasingly difficult. The coronavirus certainly has changed the way life is going on and will affect the future of our town. I'm, se I'm sensitive to the impact the economic downturn has had on our friends, family, neighbors, etc. However, I'm still in favor of the budget that was proposed in March. Given that I don't think you'll vote to pass that budget, I'd like to share my major concerns. We preserve the town services, in particular educational services, as they currently are. We preserve jobs, laying off hardworking employees in the town in order to save a few hundred dollars for each tax paying home doesn't seem right to me. It is not a balanced trade-off. We need to keep people employed where we can. Thank you to the town's town superintendent and BOE for continuing to work to meet my above stated concerns. I trust that you will make the decision that supports not only the taxpayers, but the students, employees of the town, and those who benefit from much needed town services. Matt Hutfogner for Deepwood Road. I continue to support our highly rated school system and urge the town council to make sure Farmington Public Schools receive the necessary resources to educate our students at a level that meets the expectations of parents and the residents of Farmington. Our schools are more important than ever, especially during these times of connected learning, where for some students, especially those with special needs, cannot receive the same level of education they would receive in person. I urge the town council to think about those students and ask questions about what resources will be needed for them now and in the future. Thank you. Erica Olson, Sig 6 Long Ridge Court, Unionville. Council members, I write again to strongly urge you to reconsider the proposed cuts to the town's education budget, and in particular, the salary allocations. While I understand the urge to avoid a tax increase during these unprecedented times, the decision to further imperil our children's future and our town's attractiveness to current and future residents is short-sighted and will have consequences far beyond this fiscal year. Retaining staff and fulfilling our commitment to the public education is an investment in our future we cannot afford to forego. With my thanks for your attention. Jennifer Jobin, 2 Jules Court, Unionville. <clears throat> Dear Town Council, while I think your goal to achieve a zero budget increase is admirable in such times, I strongly disagree with the impact that this will have to education in the Farmington. I moved to Farmington 15 years ago because of the strong public education available balanced with lower property taxes compared to neighboring towns. Over time, I see more and more being cut from our public schools and it has to stop. We are hurting our children and their future by eliminating programs and services over time. I fear that if the unions do not accept a salary fees to achieve a 0% goal, that even more harm will come to our children in their education. Do you think it's wise to consider reducing mental health support when mental health disorders among our adolescents is on the rise? I think it's foolish to consider taking away teaching positions and activities that help our students round out their education through art, elementary music programs, and elementary world languages disgraceful. Not all students excel in core subjects like math, science, history, and English. To take away these types of programs that some students can find their strength in is truly sad. High school sports programs are also important to helping our students develop physical fitness, teamwork, and leadership skills. Once these programs are cut, they never return. Please do what's right for students and teachers. Jennifer Jobin, mother of three school-aged children. <clears throat> Scott and Holly Hannon, 28 Winwood Road, Farmington. To the town council. As res residents of Farmington with two children attending our public schools, we would like to express our opinion about budget cuts. We ask that members consider the long range impact of these cuts to education. For example, cutting high school sports and electives jeopardize college placement, 
potential scholarships and teachers slash coaches careers. Additionally, reducing mental health services and paraprofessional support risk the well-being of our community. There are many children in town with special needs who rely on these services. When children with disabilities are unable to access the support that they need in our schools, our system has an obligation to pay out of district placements that greatly impact children's lives and are very costly. Reducing custodial staff not only affects the livelihood of our custodians, but the increase in physical cleanliness that we now require. It's very difficult to prioritize potential reductions in programming, as a strong argument can be made for all of these services. It is the reason why our children receive such a well-rounded education as both students and members of a community. It is also why many people choose to live in our town. Reductions in educational programs affect everyone including those residents without children currently attending school. Negative changes in our schools lower the property value of our homes. We appreciate the financial difficulty the current medical crisis has caused for many people. However, if the union does not support a salary freeze, then we do not support a 0% increase in taxes. Given the choice, we prefer to pay the tax increase and keep our schools strong. These cuts would create serious financial difficulty for those employees who would lose their jobs, a sacrifice that we don't support. Instead, let's find a way to support those people who would have difficulty paying a tax increase. Thank you, Scott and Holly Hannon. Gorong and Vishali Desai, 111 Mountain Spring Road, Farmington. Dear Town Council, this letter is to voice our opinion against proposed cuts to the school budget. We have been lifelong residents of Connecticut and moved to Farmington only when our first child became of school age. We, like many other families, made our choice to move to Farmington primarily due to what the town is so well respected for, the Farmington public school system. The Farmington school system is a unique and an equivocally valuable asset to our town, has spent years developing. We now have two out of our three children at East Farms Elementary and one child entering pre-K in the 2021 school year. The quality of education and extracurricular programs in the town have been an extremely important role in developing our children's knowledge, their desire to learn more, their inquisitiveness, and their sense to be part of a community where people care about each other and the future of the world around them. It is the importance of our future that compels us to write this letter. As the saying goes, the children are our future. And while COVID-19 is greatly impacting us in the present, the town should not deal with the present by taking away from our future. We urge the town council to not make cuts to the school and extracurricular budgets that affect our children. In this time of pandemic, which greatly impacts all of us, we should be planning for a future and make decisions that will make our children smarter and better prepared to lead the world. We should be focused on supporting what gives our community the most value and look to save and make cuts to investments that will not provide the same future return or value as our children's education. In order for our society and our nation to advance, we must educate and support our youth as they truly are the future of our town, our state, our country, and our world. And that's the final comment, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Paula. Uh, we will now, when you're called on, please state your name and address. Please limit your comments to five minutes. If anyone would like to speak a second time, we will repeat the process once we have completed the list fully. Please wait for the announcement that hands can be raised again. So if there's anyone else interested, you may raise your hand for the first time now. One moment, we'll be starting public comment.
We're still working on our list. We'll be with you in a moment. All right, first public comment is Inez St. James. Please go ahead, Inez. Hey, hello, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Thank you. Um, yes, this is Inez St. James. I live at 11 Brightwood Road in Unionville. I'm speaking today on behalf of Friends of Music, a not-for-profit parent organization supporting musical programming at our schools. I fully understand the decision that's in front of you. You are all elected officials supporting all of us. I personally do not understand nor agree with a 0% budget increase. But if that is put forward, I also understand that this will translate into actual cuts to services. While this might be unavoidable, I urge you to consider the realistic and long lasting damage to our children should any required cuts be made in the musical programs here in Farmington. The sheer number and scope of the impact to the vast student participation in these programs would be palpable. And please keep in mind, not just the cuts to the programs, but the impact to the students for lack of access to the arts. Musical education and experience has been shown to be extremely beneficial to the development of children. And I'm here to stand for and on behalf of our students, for they deserve to continue to have access to these programs. These benefits extend beyond the K through 12 educational experience here in Farmington. They translate into actual assistance into college programs and scholarships pursued after they leave Farmington. I think we can do better, and I urge you to take whatever steps necessary to do so. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Inez. All right, next up we have Jose Ruiz. Please go ahead, Jose. I'm sorry, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, so first, I would like to start by thanking the Farmington Council and all the elected and non-elected officials for the work you are doing during th this uh, difficult time. And I apologize, I, I live at uh, 20 Whispering Broad Road in Unionville. I am contacting you because of the concerns that I have regarding the proposed cuts to our school budget that would result in the elimination of school programs and services. Farmington's strong schools are one of the principal factors that distinguishes our community from others in the region and the state. Our schools are an important asset to our community and one that must not be put in jeopardy. Our highly regarded schools make our town a desirable place to live and positively impact both its residents and its businesses. The home values, as it's been pointed out, of all Farmington residents directly uh, benefit from its schools, regardless of whether they have children in the schools or not. Homes in the communities with strong schools enjoy better and more stable property values than those located with communities with underfunded schools. Many businesses also in our community here in Farmington benefit from our school's reputations because they use this point when recruiting employees. Many of our large businesses attract candidates by emphasizing Farmington's high quality of life, which is highly influenced by the strength of our schools. Businesses in our town also benefit by the pool of qualified candidates our schools provide. Keeping our educational system competitive benefits our community as a whole. Any steps taken that weakens our schools will have a negative and long-term effects on its residents and its businesses. Further, during these difficult times, the current crisis has demonstrated the tremendous value of having a quality educational system. Our children have been able to cope better than children in other communities thanks to the school district. This community has worked hard to develop 
and maintained over many decades. Teachers, custodians, cooks, principals, nurses, office staffs, and members of the Farmington schools have worked hard to confront this health crisis and ensure the children of our community continue to receive a great education and support. Cutting funds to our schools will make their job of educating our children more difficult in the immediate future, and it could place Farmington in the same path of other towns that have led them to diminish schools and communities. Our schools are an integral and important pillar of our community and one that represents some of the best qualities of Farmington. Yes, our community is facing a large challenge and I thank the members of the town council for the hard work and difficult decisions that you're trying, trying to make. But this challenge must not be addressed with actions that we will later regret long after the crisis is over. I respectfully ask the Farmington Town Council to abandon the proposed cuts to our schools. And I thank you again for the hard work that you're doing and I wish everyone to stay safe. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jose. Next up we have Tim Kelly. Tim, please give your address before beginning. Tim Kelly, 62 Westview, can you hear me? Yes, we can. All right. Uh, I respect the efforts of our town council in stepping up to a very unique and difficult situation. Uh, I believe uh, you are thoughtfully balancing all the factors uh, that you have control over. Uh, I also think it's worth emphasizing that even with a 0% tax increase, the operating budget of our town will increase 330,000 and our school budget will increase almost 1.3 million. So I'm confident the majority of residents support this updated 2020-2021 budget. And like most, I hope our teachers will find a way to partner with us in closing any gaps for the coming year. I understand that sometimes uh, as a parent, there can be this fear that somehow we are falling behind other school districts. But when you look at similar districts, it simply isn't the case. I would use Simsbury as an example right here in the Farmington Valley. They run seven schools like we do. They're close to us in enrollment, although they have 100 more kids in their high school. We spend about the same amount per pupil, and their proposed school budget is a $1.4 million increase, so roughly the same. At the end of the day, I think we should have confidence in our Board of Ed and school personnel that they will find a way to get the job done, even in a tough year. Thank you. All right, thank you. Next up, we have Sam. Hi, this is Sam Reisner, 41 Main Street. And I just want to uh, say, in talking with other parents of students uh, during this time, Farmington has done an amazing job providing continuity and learning for our students. So I hope we can support the schools and not uh, provide further cuts as proposed. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we have Pierre Gurton. Uh, hello, this is uh, Pierre Gurton, 12 Henley Commons. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Very good. Uh, thank you very much. I wanted to uh, thank both the Board of Ed and the Town Council for their efforts over the last few weeks to revisit the budget price, uh, the budget process in these unprecedented times. Uh, you know, this uh, career. Coronavirus 
virus uh, every year in May. Uh, candidly, when you have a negative event, of go on say excuse me. Excuse me, Pierre, we're having the size of not with your audio. Uh, we'll try to circle back to you. Okay, thank you. All right, next up we have Michelle McKenney. Hi, my name is Michelle McKenney, and I am speaking on behalf of myself, but also my mother, Deborah Donaldson, who lives at 71 Burlington Road, Unionville, Connecticut. Um, first of all, I want to thank the um, town council and the Board of Ed for revisiting the idea of the salary cuts to teachers, janitors, and public service workers in Farmington. Um, in full disclosure, I I um, am a graduate from Farmington High School, but I'm also currently a teacher at West District Elementary School, which also happens to be the elementary school that I attended as a child. So for me, I am both grateful and blessed to be able to call West District my second home, um, considering it, that it was my home as a child as well. Um, in speaking with my mom, who is a resident in Farmington recently, um, I let her know what was happening and I try to keep her apprised of all of the goings on around town. She recently lost my dad in December and he was the one who would often attend town council meetings and he also worked for ONG who was bidding on the Farmington High School project um, and he was a project manager himself so he was very involved in keeping up with all of those um, happenings. And when I spoke to my mom about what was going on and she had some really wise words that I'd like to share. She said, in all of the years that we've lived in Farmington, we haven't enjoyed one of the lowest mill rates and one of the greatest qualities of life of any surrounding town. And I'm certain that if there is a zero net budget that is passed this year, it is only going to come around back at the other end and I'm going to see an increase in my taxes more so than what I might take this year. She's currently living on a fixed budget after my dad's passing in December, but they were able to create a tax fund that they save for every year in order to pay their property taxes in Farmington. And she said that she would rather have to stock away a little extra money to pay for the increase to make sure that all Farmington residents can continue to enjoy the high quality education and the amenities that they have come to expect from the town public works department than to sacrifice and kick the can down the road a few years to where we're in a position where an even bigger tax increase is necessary because we have sacrificed and too many cuts in our current region. So I just want to again appeal to the town council and really look at the surrounding towns. I know Tim Kelly talked about Simsbury and their budget but Simsbury taxes are also much higher than Farmington's currently are. Um, we enjoy one of the lowest mill rates around town. So while I understand we are in tough economic times and we are not sure what the future holds, we just can't put a Band-Aid on something and say that we'll, we'll take care of it later. We do need to be wise, but we also have to be mindful that the act will have long-term effects for many years to come. And is it really good to have a zero net budget rather than a small increase only to possibly have to suffer greater consequences in the future? Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Michelle. Next up, we have John Bibbert. Hi, hello. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hello. Okay, good. Uh, so my only comment here is that I think everybody needs to take a look outside. It's raining out. It's raining just like it was in 1942, just like it was in 1918. And there are certain years that cause fiscal calamity. But good governments put away money for calamities. 
we call it a rainy day fund. So when it's a rainy day, like it is out today, you go to your rainy day fund and fill in the gaps. So before everybody uh, goes ahead and, and goes to this uh, cutting of, of education and other uh, uh, services, I think people need to take a look at what we have in the rainy day fund and see if that can make a difference so that we can bring in money from the rainy day fund and still give everybody a zero increase in taxes. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have Jamie Johnson. Please hold for once. Hello? Are you able to hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, my name is Jamie Johnson. I live at 17 Cope Farms Road. Uh, I'm a resident and a graduate of Farmington High School. I'm the mother of four Farmington High School graduates and a grandmother to a student currently attending Westwood's Upper Elementary School. In addition, I am a teacher of nearly 30 years at Noah Wallace School. <clears throat> Farmington has a reputation of excellence in education. Over the years, demands of teachers has increased dramatically and teachers continue to step up to the challenge. All I wanna say is let's continue to attract families to come to Farmington and stay in town by fully funding the budget proposed in March. And my comment is I want to thank John Vibbert for his wise words. Um, I agree wholeheartedly with them. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Next up we have Lisa Abel. Lisa, if you could please uh, unmute yourself. Hi, this is Lisa Abel, 36 Woodruff Road. Um, I recognize the challenges this unique time brings, but I am opposed to the budget cuts as presented. These budget cuts will have a significant impact on programs at a time when children will need them the most. Teachers are working harder than ever and don't know what the future holds. They will also be putting themselves at risk when we do return to schools. Excellent teachers will always find a way to reach children in the best way possible, no matter the budget, but it doesn't make it right to reduce salaries of these professionals. As a 17 year public school teacher in a neighboring town, I can tell you that the Farmington school system is highly respected by other districts in the state. We cannot afford to let this health crisis further impact our children in a negative way. Thank you for your time and your dedication to our town. Thank you, Lisa. All right, next we will go uh, back to Pierre Gurton. Hello, this is um, Pierre Gurton, 12 Henley Commons. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, hopefully my audio is a, a little clearer than last time. My apologies. Um, to briefly re-summarize, I, I want to thank the Board of Ed and the Town Council for their efforts, particularly over the last couple of weeks, to revisit the budget. Um, while it is difficult um, to anticipate and see the types of cuts to, compared to the original budget, I do think they are prudent um, and appropriate under the circumstances. Uh, this is a, the equivalent of what we would characterize as a 100-year event that has caused not only health challenges, um, but also significant fiscal and financial challenges for a number of families in our community. And these efforts by the council are reflective of trying to balance these interests. Essentially, we're talking about a concept in my mind of shared sacrifice. And we'll have to leave it to the administration, both at the town and the Board of Ed, to make, you know, important judgments as to how to limit the negative impacts uh, from this process. But to 
go forward with a budget with the kinds of increases that were initially contemplated in a period when there is significant uncertainty would not be wise nor prudent. The, the initial estimates in terms of a financial gap for the fiscal year we are currently in, ending June 30th, are, I believe, based on preliminary estimates, some three to $400,000. When faced with financial challenges, the first, I think, prudent approach is to try to minimize an increase in your expenditures so that the town can appropriately manage the risks that lie ahead to which the answers at this point are unknown. It's possible that the, uh, the, the economy and those in the community that have been most affected might rebound you know, relatively quickly, but it'd be inappropriate to anticipate that and not reflect uh, a bit of a shared sacrifice here during this upcoming fiscal. Uh, therefore, I think it's appropriate and I encourage uh, the town's uh, leadership as well as the Board of Ed leadership to find uh, the best and the appropriate places uh, to make uh, the cuts that have the, the most limited impact on both students and uh, residents. Thank you. Thank you, Pierre. All right, at this point, if we missed you or if you'd like to give a public comment, please uh, raise your hand. There we go. We see no other public comment. I appreciate all of you participating. Uh, we will move on to agenda item G, reading of the minutes. Peter. Peter Mastro Batista, agenda item G. I make a motion to accept the April 14th, 2020 regular town council meeting minutes. Joe Capitaferro, second. The motion has been made and seconded. Are there any comments? Hearing none, all in favor. Aye. Aye. Please, council members, unmute your microphone when you're speaking. Any opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Yeah. Peter Master Batista, I make a motion to accept the April 21st, 2020 special town council meeting. Joe Capitaferro, second. CJ Thomas, the motion has been made and seconded. Are there any comments? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Next. Peter Master Batista, I make a motion to accept the April 28th, 2020 regular town council meeting. Joe Capitaferro, second. CJ Thomas, we have a motion in a second. Any comments? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Agenda item H, reading of communications and written appeals. The town council received approximately 96 written correspondence. The majority of the correspondence to the town council received were opposed to the reductions of the Board of Education. I believe there are about 25 that were in favor of a 0% increase. The next slide lists the names of all the people who wrote letters to the Town Council. All of the letters were included in the Town Council's revised agenda. This agenda can be viewed on www.farmington-ct.org. This is the list of letter writers. Agenda item I, reports of committees. Yukon Health Committee, no report. Land Acquisition Committee. Peter Master Batista, nothing to report. Green Efforts Committee. Uh, Chris Fagan, nothing to report. Farmington High School Building Committee. 
Uh, Chris Fagan. Uh, yes, we've continuing um, with the building committee uh, project and we are still in the process of a schematic design. Um, the building project um, will be paused after completion of this period of this as schematic design and uh, this is being made with acknowledgement that there will be additional repair costs possibly to the high school required to due to the project delay and in order to ensure the school remains healthy and safe for the students. Um, our building committee understands that the decision made in light of the many unknowns in our current environment and after an evaluation of the options, risks, and benefits. And we will provide new milestone timelines to set the expectations for the committee moving forward. Um, the pause is in no way to diminish the work of the committee to date and the recommended design stands as the best comprehensive solution to the statement of needs as, um, as de developed. So um, we're continuing, uh, but there will be um, you know, changes coming out, report on those as they come up. Thank you, Chris. Item agenda J, report of the town council chair and liaisons. Uh, to start the chair report, I'd like to revisit a bit of uh, what Chris just said and thank you. Uh, that was a very nice thorough report uh, on the issue of the federal high school building committee. Uh, the committee has done a tremendous job of bringing forth this high school project. All the work they've done up to this point has based, uh, been based on prior funding our original intention was to bring the project to referendum this fall. In light of our current economic situation, that seemed less than prudent. I would like to get consensus from the council at this point to officially put the federal uh, Farmington High School budget, uh, excuse me, Farmington High School Building Committee on a pause until conditions are more appropriate for such a project. So, and I will also ask for any comments from the members of the council at this time. Uh, First off, if you have any questions, council members, please raise your hand. Okay, seeing no questions, I would just like to take, oh, Edward. Uh, Edward Gianeros, um, I'm just wondering, uh, are there any additional steps that can be taken uh, prior to going to referendum or have we taken all uh, necessary steps at this point? And, and I'll address uh, in conversations with the building committee, they will actually have a meeting in June, at which point they will be uh, uh, looking into all outstanding and confirming all outstanding invoices that they will be covering. Beyond that, uh, I have been notified that there are no other steps they need before going into a pause. Ryan Conley. Brian, are you unmuted? Hi, uh, this is Brian Connolly. Uh, I just have a follow-up question for Chris Fagan on the uh, uh, Farmington High School Building Committee question, uh, report. Chris, I was wondering um, what um, is going to constitute a more appropriate time for when we're going to get back to work on the school? Uh, I, unfortunately, Brian, I, much like everything else that we're confronting here, we're in a great uh, period of uncertainty. Um, and I cannot say when or uh, what period of time that will be. It's just Im impossible at this point in time, taking into consideration just the, uh, the economic uncertainty we're in and, um, and the issues we're confronting. So I, I, as part of my job, I'll obviously continue to you know provide updates, but there, there's no way I can uh, provide any type of concrete response to that question at this point in time. Uh, I, yeah, and just a, one other follow-up to that, and that is, um, uh, will will your entire group continue to work on this? I mean, I know you're. It sounded like you said you were going to take a pause, and what does that actually look like? And uh, that's why I was wondering, when are you all going to continue working on this when the time is appropriate to see it come to its fruition? Yeah, we're we're going to get the project through schematic design as and as close as you know as far as we can down the, the road, um, and then you know continue to evaluate as going on as, as an ongoing uh, uh, process. Um, but you know our our goal is to to, to I guess not shelve it, um, but just keep you know make sure it's it's ready to go if and when you know the the we have the ability to move forward with the project as a whole. 
So we don't want to be complacent and sitting side, but but keep moving forward and doing as much as we can. So it's prepared to go if and when you know or when it's ready. The time is viable. Thank you. And Brian, just to follow up on that, um, in my communications with the chair of the committee, she said the committee did want to keep in touch uh, and keep updated, certainly as the economy gives us a little more clarity going forward. Uh, we would like to take full advantage of all the hard work that the building committee has put in. And whenever we see a point that would be opportune to start back up, of course, that is when we would do just that. All right, very good, thank you. Thank you, and remember this is just a pause. So we do plan on moving forward on this, just not at this time. Uh, there's one other issue I'd like to address uh, because I've heard discussed in the last few weeks in great detail, and that's uh, the issue of communications. Uh, the town council and the town have been reaching, and I know the Board of Ed as well, have been reaching out to the community in a number of different ways. Uh, since the beginning of the COVID-19 threat, I personally have written nine letters to the residents uh, that have either been mailed directly to them or posted on our website. Uh, the, uh, there were also probably four too many videos uh, that I filmed. I'm sure people would like to forget about them. Uh, the town council, this is actually our eighth town council meeting uh, since COVID began, three of which have been on Zoom. And the Zoom calls have been an effective way to communicate during this period. It's allowed us to receive comments, as you've heard tonight from our residents, and also answer their questions. Uh, feedback on these calls have been very positive. We've also used the Everbridge system and made reverse 911 calls. Our Facebook president has been visible on Explore Farmington through the police department, a number of our fire departments, and the rec department. In addition, there are a number of local community sites that help spread information, such as United Farmington, Unionville Talks, and Talk of Farmington. We recently mailed our Springtown newsletter. Uh, this was one of the most dense newsletters that we have sent in recent years. So I apologize if you needed a magnifying glass, we had to shrink the font a little bit on that. So for those of you who feel they're not being informed, please be aware that we are doing our best. If you have recommendations on any other means to communicate, just let us know. With that, I will end the Chair's report. We are now going on to the reports of uh, the Board of Education. Chris. Yep. Uh, let's see. Can, am I unmuted or? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. The last board meeting um, uh, uh, sort of order business included uh, the uh, routine um, connected learning update um, as to how our, we're proceeding um, with the connected learning uh, environment. Um, there was a presentation from TSKP Studios um, and CSG, the, you know, our, our owner's rep in terms of the building project, keeping the Board of Education updated on that. Um, there's a discussion of the State of Connecticut Department of Education District Profile and Performance Report for the year 2018-2019, which I would encourage uh, everyone to take a look at. There's a lot of, you know, great data in there, but a you know, very granular uh, report uh, uh, for, you know, here, but um, I would encourage everybody to review the agenda and, and uh, uh, that report. Um, and then there was um, some uh, business with regard to uh, first readings and second readings with regard to some policy changes. Um, the two most significant would be the building specifications um, for the high school and central office in conjunction with the building project. So uh, the building specifications will be, educational specifications will be changed as that pro project is going along. Um, and that's about it. Excuse me, I forgot to unmute myself. Uh, moving on to the Economic Development Commission liaison, Edward. Yes, uh, Edward uh, Gianaros here. Uh, the EDC recently completed a business survey to understand the challenges of our local businesses uh, that our local businesses are experiencing during the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, some of the findings were that uh, they prefer cashless transactions, um, they're leery of large gatherings, 
and uh, they have concerns, of course, for their employees' safety. Uh, Kathy Blonsky will go into more details uh, of the survey results in her town manager report. The economic development director, Rose Ponte, is also working with the TPZ on a new regulation that would allow our local restaurants to have outdoor dining in Farmington and Unionville until the pandemic is over. Uh, they're working hard to make sure that the regulation is both clear and fair to all restaurants. And the next uh, economic development uh, commission meeting, uh, virtual meeting, is scheduled for June 10th at 5.30 p.m. Thank you, Edward. Uh, Farmington Historic District Commission, Brian. Hi, uh, Brian Connolly here. Uh, I do not have a report. Thank you, Brian. Uh, Housing Authority, Gary. I don't know if you could hear me. I have nothing to report. It's Gary Palumbo. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Uh, how, uh, Human Relations Commission, Joe. Joe Capitaferro, nothing to report. Thank you, Joe. Library Board, Gary. Nothing to report at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Uh, town Planning and Zoning Liaison, Joe. They've had a couple meetings in the past month where a couple new little projects have come about where a little subdivision on compromise occur. And uh, that would be it for my report. Thank you, Joe. Unionville Historic District Commission, Edward. Edward uh, Gianaros, uh, no, nothing to report. Thank you, Edward. Unionville Village Improvement Association is on. Edward Gianeros, uh, again, nothing to report. Thank you, Edward. Uh, Water Pollution Control Authority, Joe. Joe Capitara, our meeting is scheduled for tomorrow night at seven via Zoom. Thank you. And are there any other liaisons who would like to report? Hearing none, we will move on to agenda item K, the report of the town manager. written report in front of you. We have a few items. Uh, the first item is the Memorial Day Parade. Uh, I just wanted to report that the, uh, the parade has been canceled. We are working with the veterans on another way to honor the community. I'll be able to update the town council when more information becomes available. But one of the thoughts that we were talking about is having... Um, one of the talks, one of the things that we were talking about was having a, a recording of the ceremony. So more to come on that. Um, I did list in the report two uh, COVID-19 updates. One was from the Economic Development uh, Director, Rose Ponte, and the other was from Social Services. Um, those reports, um, as you can tell from the reports, both of those divisions are extremely busy um, with various COVID-19 responses. Um, but um, as Edward had mentioned, the economic development survey uh, went out to the businesses, and I think that was very well received. Um, also, in Nancy Parent and Social Services, they are incredibly busy with various items, um, and just the support of the community has been tremendous. And in general, for the COVID-19, we are now trying to work towards uh, reopening. Um, so that is where our attentions are going to be focused over the next couple of weeks. It's going to be slow, but we are looking to um, keep the safety of our employees, the public in mind, and begin um, the whole process of trying to reopen the town hall and, uh, again, working with the community just with uh, different government uh, – different – uh, governor's executive orders. You also have the quarterly reports, um, and as you know, our strategic plan was just approved in January, and then we got involved with the budget, and then the COVID-19. But we do have the report, and I'd be more than happy to answer any questions. Uh, the last item is the May 26th town council meeting. Uh, that town council meeting will be a workshop meeting uh, via Zoom, and the Hillstead Museum has asked to give the town council a presentation. So I don't know if I have anyone has any uh, questions of uh, me at this point.
Okay, hearing no questions. I'd like a motion to approve the town manager's report. Peter Mastro Batista, I make a motion to accept the top town manager's report. Joe Capitaferro, second. Are there any comments or questions? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. We have accepted the town manager's report. Moving on to agenda item L. Do we have any appointments this evening? Yes, uh, Edward Gianaros here. Um, L3, I would like to make a motion that Bruce Charette be appointed as Justice of the Peace for the balance of a four-year term beginning immediately and ending January 4th, 2021. Do we have a second, Brian? Second. Thank you. Do we have any questions or comments? Any at all? Okay, moving on. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Congratulations, Bruce. Uh, any other appointments? We'll be moving on to agenda item M, old business. Seeing none, we will move on to agenda item N, one, Peter. Agenda item N1, to amend the town council's fiscal year 2020-2021 proposed budget. Joe Capitaferro, second. The motion is moved and seconded, and I'd like to begin with a brief comment. Uh, when we first began this process, uh, we were living in a very different world. We had set a budget that I believe all involved, the town council and the board of education were very comfortable with. It has taken a great deal of effort and discussion. Um, and we are to the point we are tonight to have these uh, final discussions to put forth a budget that we uh, are hopeful that the town will be pleased with. Uh, I'd like to ask the town manager uh, for any comments at this point. Kathy Blonsky, town manager. Um, in March, the town council developed their proposed budget. That budget would normally be recommended to the annual town meeting after the public hearing in April. This year, because of the governor's executive orders, there was an explicit restriction on holding the annual town meeting and the budget referendum. Therefore, the town council must approve a budget. This motion opens the discussion for any modifications, amendments to the budget that was last worked on in March. The next slide shows the town council's proposed budget, which was approved on March 14, 2020. As you can see, that was the budget that was approved in March with a 2.16% tax increase. Next slide. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, if any of the council members have any questions or comments at this time, please raise your hand. Okay, seeing none. Peter. Amendment number one, a motion to amend the town council's proposed budget passed on March 14th, 2020 by reducing revenue interest earnings by $425,000. Joe okay. second. The motion has been moved and seconded. I will now go to Kathy Blonsky, town manager for comment. As a result of the substantial drop in the interest rates and the tax deferral program, interest earnings are expected, uh, earnings are projected to be $425,000 less than expected in March. So I am recommending with the finance director that we amend the proposed budget um, by reducing the revenue and interest earnings by $425,000. And this motion is made at the direction of the finance director. Are there any questions? Please raise your hand if you have any questions. Seeing none, oh, uh, excuse me, <laughs> seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 
Opposed? The motion passed unanimously. Next. Peter Master Batista, amendment number two, a motion to amend the town council's proposed budget passed on March 14th, 2020 by reducing revenue, interest, and lien fees by $40,000. Joe Capitaferro, second. The motion has been moved and seconded. I will now go to the town manager for comment. Kathy Blonsky, town manager. Uh, due to the tax deferral program, um, interest on delinquent taxes is projected to be $40,000 less than what it was expected in March. For that reason, the finance director has recommended that we reduce the revenue interest lien fees by $40,000. This motion has also been recommended by the finance director. Uh, are there any other comments? Please raise your hand. Okay, uh, seeing no questions, uh, council members unmute yourself, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Next. I make a motion for amendment number three, a motion to amend the town council's proposed budget passed on March 14th, 2020, by transferring $625,000 from the capital budget to the general fund operating budget, non-tax revenue. Joe Capitaferro, second. The motion has been made and seconded. I will now go to the town manager for comment. E. These funds were previously set aside to purchase the par Parsons property from the state of Connecticut. As part of the fiscal year 1920 budget, the town council began banking or saving money to purchase the Parsons property in cash. By transferring this money, when the time comes for the town council to purchase this property, a source of funding will have to be identified. Thank you, Kathy. Are there any questions or comments from the council? Please raise your hand. Brian Connolly. Hi, this is Brian Connolly. Yes, I just have a couple of questions about this, Kathy, uh, which I, I see why we're doing this, but a lot of folks uh, are very interested in that piece of property. It's something that the town has agreed upon and has worked hard to uh, make sure happens. And there are a couple of things I'm concerned about here, just want to mention, at least get on the record, and that is, uh, where would these funds be coming from in the future if we're putting this toward balancing our budget? Um, Kathy Blonsky, well, they could be coming from various sources. One, you could be, put it in another budget. You could transfer fund balance. You could go to a referendum vote. Those would be the various options. Okay, um, I, just a follow up to this, and I didn't get a chance to uh, mention this earlier, but uh, we're putting a lot of money into doing the, uh, uh, the research to make sure that the, the land itself is, uh, is clean. And, um, and a lot of people are not looking at the property because they wanna make sure that it's clean. Uh, once we do make the investment, and I know we put money aside to put this to uh, do the uh, testing on the property, are we uh, putting ourselves in jeopardy by doing the testing, finding out it's good by not having funds to purchase the property? No, I don't, I don't think so, Brian. Uh, again, it's something that we are going to be looking at. I would make sure that we weren't putting ourselves at risk for that before the testing was done on the site. So that is something that we are uh, investigating at this point, but I do understand your point. All right, excellent. I just want to make sure that after doing all of our due diligence that we don't lose the opportunity and someone else jumps in uh, if we don't have the funds to, uh, to uh, purchase this. I know it's not the full amount, but it would be certainly a lot easier to get. Uh, uh, we're slowly adding to it so that uh, I just want to make sure that we uh, protect ourselves in that fashion. So thank you very much. Thank you, Brian. Any other uh, questions on this amendment? And I will make one comment myself. Uh, this amendment in no way indicates any less interest in that property. Uh, we have indicated in the past, and I believe this council uh, has also put in our strategic plan that this is an important property to us. We would rather have control of it than going to the state. We have ongoing discussions with the state. 
uh, and uh, this should not jeopardize those discussions whatsoever. Uh, that being said, uh, Edward, did you have a question? Uh, just a just a comment. Um, uh, first, I want to thank my colleague Brian for uh, uh, the questions you asked. I had uh, uh, some of the same concerns as you. Um, I think it's important for everyone to know that the, we are still moving forward with the process. We're still leaving enough money in there for the testing, and um, we're just uh, using um, the remainder of that money in these unusual times to help us with the budget now. But I would certainly, uh, uh, I can no, I can speak for myself that I would support replenishing these funds uh, in the account um, in the uh, near future um, to make sure that we can. Uh, continue to move uh, forward with this process. Thank you, Edward. Any other comments on this proposal? This amendment, excuse me. The amendment has been, uh, the motion has been made and seconded. Uh, comments have been heard. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Next. Peter Master Batista, amendment number four. A motion to amend the town council's proposed budget passed on March 14th, 2020 by reducing debt service bond interest by $65,000. Joe Capitaferro second. The motion has been made and seconded. Uh, I will now go to the town manager for comment. Kathy Blonsky, due to the economic situation, the bond sale projected for May 2020 was postponed until late summer 2020. This resulted in the need for only one debt interest payment instead of two in fiscal year 2021, resulting in $65,000 in savings. The finance director has recommended um, this motion. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, if anyone has any questions, please raise your hand. Seeing no hands up, motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passed unanimously. Next. Peter Master Batista, amendment number five. A motion to amend the town council's proposed budget passed on March 14th, 2020 by reducing debt service bond principal by $300,000. Joe Capitaferro, second. A motion has been made and seconded. I will now go to Town Manager Tathy eaton Polanski for comment. Due to the economic situation, the bond sale projected for May 2020 was postponed until the late summer 2020. This resulted in no required principal payment during fiscal year 2021, resulting in $300,000 in savings. This uh, motion was recommended by the, the finance director. Thank you, Mrs. Blonsky. Any other comments from the council? Hearing none, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Next. Peter Master Batista, amendment number six. A motion to amend the town council's proposed budget passed on Mar March 14, 2020 by reducing debt service Clean Water Fund loan by $100,000. Joe Capitaferro, second. A motion has been made and seconded. I will now go to the town manager for comment. Due to the, uh, Kathy Blonsky, due to the postponement of the closing on the permanent finance obligation, the repayment of the loan has been delayed in November 2020, resulting in $100,000 in savings. The finance director has recommended this motion. Thank you. Any other comments from the council or questions? Seeing no hands raised, a motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Uh, I will now go to uh, town manager Kathy Blonsky to give us a little bit of background on our capital projects. Uh, the capital projects. On the screen now you see our capital projects were, that were funded as of the March 14, 2020 meeting. As you can see, these were the Board of Education and the town projects for a total of $3,171,983. Based on direction from the chairperson um, and also at the last meeting, we have made, I am going to make recommendations for substantial reductions to um, these projects. On the ne next screen, 
the proposed capital improvement uh, budget CIP on 31420 showed the town having $1,640,000 and the Board of Education having $1,531,983 for a total again of $3,171,983. The proposed capital uh, projects was split 52% for the town and 48% for the Board of Education. The proposed reductions that I'm recommending mirror those um, percentages. So the town has uh, $770,000 in reductions and the Board of Education $710,000 for reductions for a total reductions of $1,480,000. Next slide. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, Peter, we can go on to our next amendment. Peter Master Batista, Amendment 7. A motion to amend the Town Council's proposed budget passed on March 14, 2020, by reducing the Capital Improvements Plan, Board of Education, Technology Improvements accounted by Technology Improvements account by $223,000 to reduce the district-wide mechanical equipment account by $75,000, to reduce the classroom furniture account by $185,000, to reduce school security by $25,000, to reduce structural architectural by $68,000, to reduce school code safety compliance by $25,000, to reduce cafeteria equipment by $25,000, and to reduce the IAR cafeteria addition slash renovation by $84,000 for a total reduction of $710,000. Joe Capitafaro, second. Thank you, we have a motion and a second. I will now go to the town manager for comment. Uh, Kathy Blonsky. These um, reductions came from the Board of Education staff. These were their recommendations. Thank you, Kathy. Are there any questions? Please raise your hand from the council if you have any questions. Okay, seeing no questions. Oh, sorry, Edward. Uh, yeah, not a question, just uh, a comment. Um, just to, I just want to reiterate that um, we all know that these capital projects um, are not nice things to have. They're things that need to get done. And I understand the reason why we're uh, making the reduction this year, um, uh, but I just want to state that we're, we're certainly going to have to play catch up next year to make sure that we're um, keeping on track with our, um, our long-term goal of, uh, of the uh, capital improvement program. Thank you. Thank you, Edward. Uh, Brian? Yes, this is Brian Connolly. Uh, just a quick question. Uh, I, on that last slide at the bottom, it said that the uh, the Board of Ed uh, budget uh, recommendations were made by the Town Council, or did I read that incorrectly? No, they were made at the direction from the Board of Education staff. Right, that's right, for the, from the RK. I just wanted to, uh, all right, I see the bottom there. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure that uh, we weren't, it wasn't us telling the Board of Education what to do, it was them making the recommendations to us, which was extremely helpful. Thank you for the clarification, Brian. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Seeing no other hands raised, we have a motion and a second on the table. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Peter Master Batista, amendment number eight. A motion to amend the town council's proposed budget passed on March 14, 2020 by reducing the capital improvement plan Town Engineering Environmental Compliance Account by $50,000 to reduce highway and grounds irrigation improvements account by $25,000 to reduce highway and grounds dump truck highway account by $200,000 to reduce highway grounds mowers parks by $5,000 to reduce planning quality of life improvements by $100,000 to reduce fire and rescue services communications upgrade by $25,000, to reduce uh, police technology improvements 
by $25,000, police department communications upgrade by $25,000, to reduce police dispatcher council stations account by $30,000, to reduce the town manager technology improvements account by $35,000, to reduce reevaluation account by $50,000, to reduce community and recreational services Stonehouse account by $75,000 for a total reduction of $770,000. Joe Capitaferro, second. The motion has been made and seconded. I will now go to the town manager for comment. On the slide on the, Kathy Blonsky, on the slide on the screen, you can see the original um, capital improvement project for a total of 1640 and then the revised with um, my recommendations. Um, I worked with uh, my department heads and my direct reports and these are their recommendations and my recommendations as I, um, I agree with Edward, uh, you know, none of these are great. Um, it's going to be difficult to, um, in the following years, but I think that we are still making some progress on some of our communication. I think it's important that we continue with our technology. I also uh, think it's important that our town hall improvements and the reason for that is technology just with the COVID. There's so much new things with the technology and we have to keep that up. And also on the town hall improvements and as I've discussed earlier, there are things that we have to do to upgrade the building um, because of the COVID-19. We did uh, uh, have to, we do have a few pieces of equipment in there and we do have the crucial turnout gear and hose for the fire department. So again, um, it's, it wouldn't be my first choice for it to have to do this, but I think that it's um, something that to get us the pathway that we need to be. Thank you, Kathy. Are there any questions from the council? Please raise your hand. Brian Conley. Uh, thank you. Um, Kathy, this is Brian Conley. Uh, I have one question that you just uh, alluded to that made me think. You said there were a number of uh, changes and uh, things going on at the town hall that have been affected by COVID-19. Are any of those things uh, able to be reimbursed from the uh, federal government for COVID-19 expenses? And I just wanted to see if that was uh, something that we should be considering. We are considering it, and yes, uh, some of these items definitely will be considered, and we are applying for all the appropriate grants. And so, again, we have not received any money yet for anything, but we are applying for all the grants for the various things that we have to update and go through for all our COVID-related expenses. That's wonderful. So that would, if, if we recoup any of that money, that would effectively add some dollars to our budget for the year. Is that correct? It could, yes. All right, thank you. Thank you, Brian. And uh, it would be my great hope if we did get uh, money back on any of these items that they would be going towards the capital improvement projects that we have put off next year. Uh, if you look at the list, there are really no frills on this list. Uh, so we are truly cutting deeply to try and get us where we feel we need to be. And I'm hopeful uh, that we're in better times next year and we can make up for that. Uh, seeing no other questions, we have a motion on the table that has been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Next. Peter Master Batista, amendment number nine, a motion to amend the town council's proposed budget passed on March 14th, 2020 by reducing the police patrol full-time account by $35,500. Joe Capitaferro, second. We have a motion and a second. I will now go to the town manager for comment. Uh, Kathy Blonsky, this uh, reduction represents funding for one patrol uh, officer position for half the year. This position is currently vacant. I would be hopeful that if uh, the economy picks up and after our November um, tax deferral um, that we could uh, fund this position. It's funded for half a year. If anyone has any questions, please raise your hand. 
Okay, thank you. And again, as the town manager just said, this is a currently a vacant position and we would hope there would become funds available to uh, fill this position. But at this time, uh, I will move. There's a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passed unanimously. Next. Peter Master Batista, amendment number 10. A motion to amend the town council's proposed budget passed on March 14, 2020, by reducing the elderly services full-time account by $25,500. Joe Capitafaro, second. A motion has been made and seconded. I will now go to the town manager for comment. Kathy Blonsky, this rep uh, reduction represents funding for one program clerk position in the Community and Recreational Service Department for half the year. This pos position serves at the Senior Community Center. This position is currently vacant. Again, like the patrol officer, patrol officer position, um, if the economy picks up, we'd like to be able to fund this position um, half the year. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, any questions, please raise your hand. Brian Conley. Thank you, CJ. This is Brian Conley. Uh, Kathy, I just have one question as this is our most vulnerable uh, component of our, of our community. How is this going to impact them? Well, it's a, it's a program clerk position that's located in the senior center. A couple of things, Brian, about this. One is with the COVID-19 that the senior center is probably gonna be the last um, places that is going to open full time and this would be the person that would be in the senior center. The current the position is currently vacant right now and we still have the senior director. So as I agree with you 100% um, about the senior population, I'm hopeful that um, halfway through the year we'll be able to fill this position and if all goes well maybe at that time by that time our senior center will be up and running. Thank you very much Kathy. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Seeing none, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passed unanimously. <laughs> Next. Peter Master Batista, amendment number 11, a motion to amend the town council's budget proposed, passed on March 14, 2020, by reducing the 2020-2021 top town operating budget by $39,000. Joe Capitaferro, second. We have a motion and a second, and I would just like to comment on this one. Uh, the town operating budget is over $31 million. Uh, the request to reduce that by $39,000, we feel comfortable that the town manager will find places to reduce that amount without great stress. Are there any other questions or comments? Seeing none. Uh, we have a motion and a second on the table. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Next. Peter Master Batista, amendment number 12. A motion to amend the town council's proposed budget passed on March 14, 2020, by reducing the 2020-2021 Board of Education operating budget by $200,000. Joe Capitaferro, second. We have a motion and a second. Um, and I will make a comment, uh, although reducing any operating budgets is difficult uh, in discussions with the Board of Education Chair and the Superintendent, they feel they can reduce their $69 million budget by this uh, amount without a great deal of stress on the system. Um, so that's just my comment. Any other comments? Brian Conley. Thank you, CJ. Just uh, want to confirm that uh, the uh, the Board of Education feels that they can do this without any uh, major impact on programs. As we, uh, I know we're getting into summer, but uh, we're going to need some support as we get into a new year, no, not knowing what's coming. So I just want to make sure that they are comfortable with that. Brian, it has been indicated to me that they are comfortable with that amount, and it would not have any substantial impact uh, on programs. Thank you for that clarification. Any other comments? We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Aye. Opposed? The motion passed unanimously. Okay, I'm gonna to go to the town manager to explain the next screen we are looking at. Kathy Blonsky, town manager. These are the amendments on the screen right now of what you uh, just did. As you can see on the education, you've reduced $200,000. On the town side of the budget, you reduced $100,000. On debt service, you reduced $465,000. On capital improvements, you reduced $1,480,000 for a total reduction on the expenditure side of the budget of $2,245,000. On the revenues, uh, you reduced by $40,000 on other property taxes. On interest, you reduced $425,000. And on CIP contribution, you added $625,000. That's the Parsons money. For a total, um, you added $160,000 to the revenue side of the budget. If you can see on the bottom of the screen, this is the tax and mill rate. As you can see that the mill rate stays the same at 27.97 mills, and that is a 0% uh, tax increase. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, you can all take a look at our current tax and budget worksheet. I would ask at this time, does anyone have any other amendments to this, to make to this budget? Seeing none. Uh, We'll move on to the next slide. Agenda item N, two. Peter Master Batista, agenda item N, two. To adopt the Town of Farmington fiscal year 2020-2021 budget with the Board of Education budget at $69,976,581 to set the town budget at $31,378,237 to set the debt service budget at $8,837,449 to set the capital improvement budget at $1,691,983 to set the Board of Education defined contribution budget at $50,000 for total town council appropriation for fiscal year 2020-2021 of $111,934,250. Joe Capitaferro, second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, for this motion, I would like to just go down the list and uh, poll the council members for any comments. Uh, Brian, I'd like to start with you if we could. Any comments? Thank you, CJ. This is Brian Connolly. Uh, I just want to bring up that uh, I appreciate what we're doing with uh, focusing on getting a zero, a zero percent increase, which I think is important in these times. Just want to make sure we're not um, taking too much out of our budget. But as you said earlier, you know, as uh, money comes rolling in from COVID nineteen. Uh, uh, funding, uh, it's possible that we can inject some of that cash back into our into our budget. Thank you, Brian. Yeah. Uh, Edward. Yes, uh, Edward Gianaros. <clears throat> uh, we're in an unusually difficult time with the dual crisis problem, the COVID-19 health crisis combined with a unprecedented economic crisis. Unfortunately, we've lost many lives and the correlated budget impact uh, due to high unemployment and financial stress that people are under has taken a great toll. Uh, people, for no fault of their own, have found themselves in a precarious financial situation. Uh, this affects not only the worker but their families. I'm glad that we have a solution before us that protects the taxpayer by not raising property taxes in the coming fiscal year. And at the same time, the cuts that we're making are not forcing layoffs, uh, such as our teachers and first responders, which I think is very important. Um, it's nice to see our community come together during these uncertain times. I think this budget strikes the right balance between being mindful of the financial pressures people are under 
and the importance of providing the town services and educational excellence that our residents expect. And uh, with that said, I, I support this uh, budget proposal. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, Gary. I am in favor for this budget. Um, I vote for it as it stands. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Uh, Peter. Uh, Peter Master Batista. Um, I'm going to just kind of wing it here. I don't have anything prepared, so it's going to be more from the gut. Um, I, I, I don't take pleasure in doing any of this. Um, we're in unprecedented times here. Um, we've had community members in our community die from this. We've had over 100 people with the disease or sickness. Um, we have a lot of people in this town who are struggling. And I think this is the least we could do to help those that have been um, affected by this. Um, I wanna say one thing is that me as a counselor, and I speak for myself, is I think of this job as I have to look out for every resident in this town. I have to worry about the elderly on fixed incomes, low pensions, um, or minimal pension. I have to worry about veterans who might be on limited disability or full disability. I have to worry about the new couple who just moved into town and just bought a house. And they might be concerned now that they can't do things to their new home and they want to start a new life here. I have to worry about everything. And I worry about the school system too, just as much. I take a lot of pride in it. I went through it. My kids went through it. I take a lot of pride in this school system. I'm not happy about what we had to do, but I think it's the right thing that, we've, that we're doing for a community as a whole. On that, I will support this. And as I uh, always like to say, go Farmington. We're a tough community. We'll all stick together. We'll get through this. Thanks. Thank you, Peter. Chris. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you, CJ. Um, I, you know, for the record, I, I like Peter, uh, take no pleasure in charting this path we're doing tonight. Um, I will be in voting favor of this budget as amended and presented tonight. And I'd like to just take a opportunity and make a few comments uh, before we vote. Um, first, I'd like to personally thank you, CJ, my fellow council members, Kathy Blonsky, Kathy Greeter, Ellen Sayuda, the entire Board of Education and every other person, uh, too many to mention individually, who were involved in the budget process this year. I'll just ask that the committee take a minute and reflect upon the severity and uncertainty surrounding the times we find ourselves in at this moment and the efforts put into the budget process by your elected officials and municipal partners. Um, as a member of the Town Council, and sort of echoing Peter's comments, we're stewards of the entire community, and as such, we owe a fiduciary responsibility of loyalty and care to each and every resident that resides here and makes Farmington the wonderful community we've come to love. Um, while some of us may not be personally affected by the financial impacts of the events swirling around us, we must not fall victim to our own complacency to think that our individual reality applies to everyone. These are very, very challenging times for our community as a whole and the vast number of its residents. And every single person has had to adapt in an instant to a new world order in terms of working from home and managing their daily lives. Uh, no, one can, uh, no one is immune and everyone is sacrificing. And I sit here tonight and can tell you my house has been directly impacted and I have many friends who have been either laid off or furloughed. Some of those that remain employed are taking five, 10, 20% reductions in salary just to keep their jobs. Our community's major revenue source has been deferred for 90 days and when it comes in, we do not know what will come in nor do we know what the future holds beyond that. Uh, you know, on a personal note, I'm, I, I, I must say that, you know, sometimes I get saddened and I sort of see what's, you know, out there in social media and the like and the level of public disclosure around events like this. And I've unfortunately uh, been left with the distinct impression that somehow I or the council, you know, don't quote unquote get it uh, as we're trying to find a reasonable solution to the uncertainty and the challenges confronting us. Um, I think I bring a unique perspective to this process. And first, you know, first my wife's a phys physician, but more importantly, a cancer survivor. And this weekend on Mother's Day, physically compromised and vulnerable, she was on call in the hospital, covered head to toe, probably double wrapped in PPE, you know, delivering babies. And so I'm fairly certain I understand the meaning of personal sacrifice right now in these challenging times. 
Um, and second, for those that may not know, before officially joining the board, I did get this figure in my life the board education. Half of that is board chair. So again, I think I understand the importance of our schools to the community, and I've spoken to graduations, convocations, dinners celebrating our educators' 25th anniversaries, new teacher receptions, and I could go on. And if we we're actually in the council chambers right now, I'd point at the table in front of us and say, I sat there at the budget time advocating for our students, teachers, and schools over the years. Then and now, my passion and commitment to and for our schools, superintendent, greeter, central office, and all the administrators, principals, teachers, custodians, nurses, paraprofessionals, and everyone involved in our schools remains unwavering. And I'd like this community to know, despite any pressures you may have to the contrary, that those sentiments are shared by every single one of my council members. Um, during my short tenure on the council, I had a personal highlight back in January, getting to know and honor Kathy Greeter, I mean, getting to honor Kathy Greeter upon her being recognized as superintendent of the year. In my comments that night, I said I had a goal for the entire council, and that was for us to approach our job as council members with the same passion, dedication, commitment, empathy, and humanity for every student, family, and resident of Farmington that she brought to her job every day. And while we may be too close to the moment to reflect on this right now, as stewards and fiduciaries for the community as a whole, I know, while I'm sure some may disagree, and that's fine, that we as a council have done our job. I had a personal goal that evening, too, that was to make Kathy proud of me, and she's... Uh, in my role in the town council and seeing what she has been through and what this process has done to her tonight, I sit here questioning my success in that regard. However, so to Kathy, if you're still listening, I apologize and ask for your understanding during these unprecedented and very challenging times before us. So I'd just like to again thank everyone involved in the process for all their hard work as difficult and trying as it has been. And to the community, please know that we have exhaustively explored and considered all our options in doing what we felt in our hearts and minds was the best for the community today and tomorrow even when as crazy as it sounds, we have no idea or certainty what tomorrow holds for us. So in closing, I would like to wish that everyone stays safe, stays healthy and well. And like CJ, who ends our council meetings with some words of wisdom, I would often do the same in my speeches as the board chair. And tonight I'm not gonna quote some well-known philosopher, great thinker or historical figure speaking of a shared community of sacrifice. However, I am going to encourage everyone when you just need to get out of the house for a break to take the opportunity like I did this morning when running an errand and drive down Route 4, drive past our high school. And as you go by, look at the electronic message board in front of our very own high school because we should take guidance from our own students whose mission is one school, one community, one us. Thank you, CJ. Thank you, Chris. Uh, Joseph. Thank you, Joseph Capitaferro. I want to thank Kathy Blonsky, Kathy Greeter, Joe Swetsky, and everybody else who helped get this budget together. I want to say to our residents that we have take, who have had take reductions of pay from their job, who have been furloughed, laid off, who cannot collect unemployment, who lives have been changed forever, who are elderly and disabled, who cannot leave their homes due to the virus, who live on fixed incomes, to our children who have been out of school for the last two months, and to the seniors of Farmington High School who've had their last part of the year taken away. We as a council are trying hard to look at everyone here, but as you can see, we cannot make everybody happy. We work hard to find a solution that everyone can accept. If you think you're unable to pay for your taxes, please call the tax department to find your options. If you cannot leave your home to go food shopping, to run errands, if you can't afford to buy food or need to stand in line at the food share, please call social services to find out how we can help you. Let's get through, through this together and I do support what we come up with for this budget tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Joseph. Um, I'd like to make a couple of comments myself. First of all, thank you all uh, council members uh, for your uh, wise and uh, passionate words. This has certainly been a fairly different process to get to a budget than there have ever, has ever been in the past. Uh, we have had to learn our Zoom manners. Uh, we have had to learn uh, to respond uh, in very different ways than we had before. We've also tried, as I mentioned earlier, to reach out in as many different ways as, uh, than we have before. Uh, so thank you to all the council members, my fellow council members for all their hard work. I'd also like to thank uh, all of the Board of Education members and the Board of Education chair uh, for working with us throughout this process uh, from the beginning right through to the very end, figuring out how we could reach 
an agreement that seemed to uh, fit what was in the best interest of the entire town. Uh, to the superintendent of schools, uh, thank you for your assistance there. To Kathy Blonsky, the town manager, of course, uh, thank you very much uh, in helping get through this process in such an unusual manner that we have had to make, uh, make do with. Uh, so to everyone involved uh, and the staff who has had to work on odd hours throughout, uh, you've all done a fantastic job and I really want to uh, thank you. But uh, remember, right now we are dealing with a massive unknown. We have no idea what lay ahead. We are trying to put ourselves in a position where no matter what is ahead, we are best suited for that. Uh, we are trying to keep our town in not only the best financial position we can going forward, uh, but keep our town running well and keep people, uh, the town services, what they had been and have been. Uh, so although that 2.16% tax increase seemed logical in a different world, it is not at all today. And I think we all are uh, very comfortable that the right thing to do is uh, this excuse me tax increase of zero and uh, I will ask before I end my comments for all of you who can and are capable of paying your taxes on time please do so when those bills come in uh, the cash shortage we are expecting will be substantial so please pay your taxes if you can with that said uh, I will move on we have a motion and a second I will now uh, ask for the, uh, excuse me, uh, all in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Next item on the agenda, new business number three. Peter Mastrobatin, Peter Mastro Batista. New business uh, agenda item N3 that a property tax rate of 27.97 mills be levied on the next taxable grand list of October 1st, 2019 in the amount of $3,699,967,077 to meet the appropriations of the town of Farmington for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2020 through June 30th, 2021. And that such taxes, <clears throat> excuse me, shall be payable in equal installments on July 1st, 2020 and January 1st, 2021, except that property taxes as defined in section 12-141 of the Connecticut General Statutes in an amount not in excess of $100 shall be due and payable in a single payment on July 1st, 2020 as provided by section 12-144 of the Connecticut General Statutes and except that any tax on any motor vehicle shall be due and payable in full on July 1st, 2020, as provided in section 12-144A of the Connecticut General Statutes, and that solid waste service charge be set at $235 for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2020. Joe Capitaferro, second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, this motion is setting the property tax rate at 27.97, which is just what it is today, uh, and the solid waste service charge at 235. Do we have any comments or questions from the council? Seeing none, we have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All in favor? Are your microphones on? Aye. 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 Thank you. I think my speaker was off. I apologize for that. <laughs> uh, bumps along the road even at the end here. Those opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. Next item. Peter Master Batista, agenda item N4, to approve the transfer of uncollectible property taxes to the suspense tax book. Joe Capitaferro, second. We have a motion and a second. I will now go to the town manager for comment. 
In accordance with Section 12165 of the Connecticut State Statutes, the tax collector has recommended the 2020 Suspense Tax Book. This book has been compiled for the purposes of identifying sums that may be uncollectible, and no way does it represent a cancellation of the tax. The tax office will con continue to exercise every possible avenue to collect the unpaid tax. Those who own motor vehicle taxes cannot register a vehicle in the state of Connecticut until the tax is paid. The total sum involved is uh, $10,409.79. Thank you, Kathy. Um, any comments? Seeing none, we have a motion on the floor in a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Next item. Peter Master Batista, agenda item N5, to change the time of the June 23rd, 2020 town council meeting from 7 p.m. to 6 p.m. Joe Capitaferro, second. We have a motion and a second. I will now go to the town manager for comment. Uh, Kathy Blonsky, the topic of this meeting is the town manager's yearly performance evaluation, which will be held in executive session. Thank you, Kathy. Any comments? Seeing none, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Peter Master Batista, agenda item N6, to approve the property tax refunds as listed in the town council agenda. Joe Capitaferro, second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, and the list, I believe, is uh, in your packets there. Are there any questions? Seeing none, I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Next item is executive session, of which we have none. And before I ask for a move to adjourn, I will leave you with this evening's quote from Lyndon Baines Johnson. Yesterday is not ours to recover, but tomorrow is ours to win or lose. I will now ask for a motion to adjourn. I make, uh, Peter Master Batista, I make a motion to adjourn the May 12th, 2020 meeting. Captain Farrell, second. Any comments or questions? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. We are adjourned.